Good morning, everybody. Orange Jay here with another War of the Visions video. And today, we're going to be looking at the new units and vision cards coming to global this Wednesday. Now, emphasis on the words coming to global this Wednesday because this is old content in JP. In fact, if we go look at JP's release schedule, you can see they're in the middle. They're having their near thing. They got new Lucio. They have, you know, the Wind Veritas unit that we don't have yet. But Comrel is not even on this screen. Let's go four more units deeper. We have the Final Fantasy VIII collab, Soul. We have Renoa, Grifford, Summer, Glassy. You have to go all the way back to Melnia before you see Bronwell show up in the JP timeline. This is a unit that's been out since before Melnia. Bronwell, Comral, these came out after Alaya the Alabaster in JP. So these are very, very dated units in terms of bringing brand new. If there was ever a week where I would just hope that uh, the developers are like, look global, we understand Road to Worldwide was terrible and it was bad and all of those things that we've basically admitted, so we're just filling a gap here have these things like just give them away 2k banners or something like that don't make people spend 18,000 vizior for bronwell because i don't think they will same thing with the vision card don't try to make people spend 10k for the vision card I, it might still be worth it we'll look at it here in a minute we'll look at the vision card the units like we always do and see if they're worth it but if there was ever a week to just be extra generous with handing stuff out i mean comrel's free so you know that that's great but the this vision card and unit are definitely dated they're definitely dated so let's check them out now here's bronwell she was not a free unit but she is cost 70. oftentimes these come with those nine step banners so you just get them at the end i think that's fine and look it, i'm gonna say some negative things here but like always in war of the visions if you just think that this unit looks cool which she really does and you really want to build a team around her don't let me or anybody else talk you out of anything i'm going to talk about like are things part of the meta like do i think she's going to be top tier or next tier if she's your girl use her she'll work all right here we go so here she is 70 cost great knight paladin dragoon her tmr is a win so her tmr is a big w right here the stats on it are kind of whatever but it is a haste tmr with two uses that's a big deal then you have ap consumption down 25 when you have haste this is fantastic like any TMR that gives you access to haste, that is a very, very useful buff in the modern day of the game. Her master ability, she's got the group buff. She's got 15 defense pin. There's one of those four things I'm looking for. So she's on the road there. She gets AP consumption down, which does synergize well with her TMR. Her dream ability is reaction block rate 50. That's really good. Defense 15, mm, that's a little dated. And then she gets an upgrade to her skill. So like TMR, W, master ability, dream ability, pretty mid let's go look at the rest of what she's doing sure great knight's tips this is going to give you 40 defense pin 24 attack and 15 aoe resist absolute top tier support ability and you're going to run this all the time this brings her out of uselessness right she's instantly better than eileen just with this support ability and her tmr then she falls off a little bit you can go holy knight's protection for some more defense and hp and she definitely seems to be a unit that wants to stack defense and hp and be hard to kill via stacking defense and she does have some mechanics that will help her with that that we'll look at here in a minute um unwavering heart pierce and missile resist that's dated jump plus one is situational at best and then hp and healing power up is pretty meh so it looks like you're running great knight's power and holy knight's protection most of the time a plus c minus like again support ability is just not there her counter ability she has a 20 percent chance to reduce damage by 30 percent and that's her best one like again if you're going purely anti-physical you can run paladin guard but no modern counter ability right here it's a nut she's very 70 cost in the support and counter ability area and when you're considering she's in an element that have these 70 cost units already like halloween lucia who feels more like 100 cost than a 70 cost that's another you know kink in her armor for sure on should you pull now her main job break attack this is her cheap move it's an attack debuff 121 percent modifier she has a group buff that dispels ap auto restore for three turns but that's it like i would expect a buff that this is the thing that it did to also at least give like protect 
or shell or something like that. She has a dispel protect with a mix of striking damage. So again, if you go back in time all the way to like last summer, having striking damage in your kit made you a little better than just having slashing damage. But today, you know, striking damage isn't what it used to be. This can stun, which is a big deal, and it dispels protect, so that's pretty good. She has encouragement of protection, which upgrades to guardian's encouragement. This is a good buff. So it gives her a 50% physical damage shield, gives pierce resist and critical evasion for four turns to her allies. So I do like that. If you're trying to go a little anti-pierce, okay, gives regenerate to her allies. And for herself, she gets defense penetration for three turns. She, if with this buff on, with her support ability and master ability, she's got her defense pin checked right? You can check that off the list, but we have no slash attack resist penetration yet. We have a little bit of AOE resist and no single target resist. So those modern stats just kind of not there. Now, she does have an AOE barrier breaking move. I do like that a lot. Then second breaking life sucking cut. This is supposed to be her bread and butter thing. It is a two target selector. And remember, this is a girl that like predates soul in JP. So this was a big deal back in the day. Um, two target selector dispels protect and shell. That's nice. This gives her 40 slash slash attack penetration, but only for this move. It's a three use move and it has slash attack resist pin on it, but only for the move. Then it does 200% damage and absorbs the damage done. This is a great attack. Like this attack is really, really solid. If she had other slash attack resist penetration, or if this at least buffed her for like three or four turns, it'd be better, but I think you could just see, you know, that she's not quite there. Then her new sub job does have a multi-hit dark resistance down striking move. There's a lot of good use for this. Being able to debuff the elemental resistance with a chaining move has PVE, PVE potential. And let, let, she has that. She's also a great sword user, so she can use the triple trick card. There is potential here in PVE, I think, especially if you don't have a bunch of stacked lineup for those units. She has a silence move in there. Paladin does give her access to sentence Sentinel, but no courage, so she doesn't even have that. Uh, Dragoon gives her some piercing moves if she wants them, and Dragon Blood's a good buff that gives you protect and reaction block rate and attack up, but man, oh man. Now, her limit break, defense pin 40. So she's actually like got more defense penetration than she needs if she's using her limit break, her moves and her master abilities, all those things, 200% modifier. Then it decreases defense and spirit pin by 40 for the target. So this is what she's meant to do. She's meant to go in there for a fight, drop this limit break on somebody from range, stack her defense with things like this and her master ability and gear, and then just be hard to kill. I just don't know if that's like a viable path for a brand new UR unit. You give her out for free, I'll try her, I'll use her, I'll have fun with her because she does look cool. She's a cool looking unit. She's a, you know, spear, great sword, spear waifu. I like, there's a lot to like there about that. Now, Comroll, the free unit. Let's talk about him set third. Let's do the vision card next. Let me see if I can translate this. I might have to, there we go. El Sorel solo mission or El Solares or El, El Killare solo mission. Really, again, high quality artwork right here, especially the details, but the vision card itself it feels dated. All right, so HP, attack, defense. The unit effect, attack 20%, critical evasion five. The attack 20% is great, but this is definitely lacking. Uh, the group buff is gonna be debuff, effect weakening 30, defense 12, HP 25. So you can see this is in line with what Bronwell is supposed to do, right? Stack your defense, stack your HP, take defense, pin off the targets, and then go to work. Again, the problem is it's just kind of not enough. Now, there is a global buff for this vision card. So let's look at that. It's a nice one, too. So for Elsorel and Sorel, you're going to get unit attack resist up. For Elsorel, you're going to get slash attack resist piercing up. And for Sorel, you're going to get defense piercing right up. None of those are for Bronwell, but they're really good for Elsorel. Like, Elsorel's buff to this card. If you're an Elsorel enjoyer, I think you have a reason to pull this thing. So there we go. It's definitely probably one of her uh, best in slot V sees, but I'm not really an Elsorel player. Then we do have Comrel, free boy, free boy right here, farmable. You can get him all the way up. His TMR is a weapon. So it's a fist TMR, 138 attack with critical hit rate 15. Not terrible, but there's definitely a drop off in the value of like weapon based TMRs. Now that you don't have to put trust stones onto TMRs anymore, in my opinion. Some people will say, 
excuse me, some people will say that hasn't changed at all. I don't know. I, I have found less desire to since it came out and I, there's no math behind that for me. I just look at this and I'm like, meh, it's pretty, it's pretty, bit, you know, mid. Okay, his master ability. He's going to get paralyzed resistance to his group with the HP buff. He gets strike resist pin 10. That's cool. Reaction block rate 20, ice killer 20, a little bit of anti ice right there. Gets HP, acquired AP up and a weapon and a skill upgrade with his dream ability. Very 50 cost free feeling unit from those things. Now, tips for fighting, this is really, really good. 24% attack, defense pin 40, AOE resist 15, all three things that you really want on a unit. Then Secret of the Nightblade, there's more attack, more accuracy with a little evasion mixed in, or you could go agility and move. His support kit here is better than Bronwell's, and he's the free MR unit in my opinion. He has physical reflex, which again is better than any of Bronwell's. It's a low proc chance and only 15, but it's definitely the one you're gonna run because the rest of these are pretty bad. Okay, his main job, he has an agility down move with his cheap attack right there. He does have the upgraded courage it's the one that Marshallists get where you restore a little AP while you give yourself courage. He has Oath of Death. This is a group buff that upgrades to Oath to Kill. Dispel ignore fatal damage to allies and dispel follow-up cast for three turns. Pretty powerful, like pretty powerful. This is a good buff. It also increases allies accuracy and gives him, or I'm sorry, increases his accuracy and AOE resist. So he's not sharing the AOE resist, but there's a lot to like about that buff. Makes him feel usable to me. Meteor three breaks, a three hit chaining move, also really useful. It reduces counter chance by hundred and does 165% modifier. Uh, Chunya Tingyum, this is another attack. It won't hit people with float, but it gives him defense pin 40 for three turns, 165% attack, and it's a 60% boost to the modifier. So it's 225% if they have um, a defense up or AP auto restore. Heavenly Killing Fist, another move that will not hit floating targets, but does hit in a nice square. Um, decreases their AOE resist by 30 and then does some damage. A lot of modern stuff on this guy's kit, more than Bronwell at least. His martialist sub job gives him a short range AOE attack based on him and then surefire stance is a big attack steroid but drops five spirit. It, this is a good buff to be honest. Nightblade gives him access to some slashing moves with a resistance buff and then sniper gives him access to some missile moves with a defense pin buff for himself if he wants it. So three different damage types on this guy. He's free, build him and you might find a use for him in some limited PVE. Okay, we're almost done here. We got some upgrades to old uh, old limit breaks here. We're going to start with Eileen, the goddess herself. Now, Eileen's terrible. She's not really playable, but and she's playable in PvE scoring missions, and she gets a big limit break upgrade right here. Previously, you used her for the 38% earth resist debuff, and then you'd follow up with like, you know, the triple hit piercing card from the holidays. Now, she, get, she does 48% earth resist debuff. That alone kept her usable. 200% physical damage increase by 20%. So you boost her damage by 20%, which will help her chain. The damage stays the same. Then she has 200% chance to ignore fatal damage for self. If she has ignored fatal damage, she it decreases her AP consumption. This looks like a PVP buff on the surface, but giving her AP consumption down is really nice for PVE as well. She gets, they kind of just lean into what she is in this. Now, I think this was probably targeted for PVP, but it does make her better in those PVE chaining missions. That is the only thing she really shines in in today's version of the game okay victoria another og spear waifu not from the original game but from just a little bit after the original game came out her limit break gets a nice upgrade here so previously this was something you could use especially in manual play to look for this charm but the cross shaped was weird it was kind of hard to get off now it dispels all buffs or target does something that i don't know what it is modifier stays the same it's guaranteed hit now which is really nice the 67 percent charm stays the same and you get regenerate you get aoe resist 20 and elemental chain resist 50 if you have the um, regenerate online. So a nice buff to Victoria's PVP potential right there. And then more, a unit nobody even thinks about in today's version of the game, she gets this upgrade to her limit break. Previously, it decreased water resist in a nice diamond shaped AOE. Still does that, still the same percent, but also decreases spirit now and reduces counter chance. D there's a potential here for like really opening up some kind of big boss to take damage with the spirit and water resist down. And then there's some other effect that is not translated on Wood of Calc. Either way, none of those are like massive, massive upgrades. I love how like my Chrome untranslates everything. I don't know why. These only been open for like 10 minutes and it untranslated all the pages. Weird.
Anyway, here's a really good upgrade. Dawnlight or Winged Stern's Sword, but it's usable not just by him. You can see it's all these jobs that can use this thing and it gets a huge buff. The Assault version goes from 168 to 202, which is really good. Then if you look at the buff details right here, the, the Slash Attack Penetration stays at 20, but the Human Killer goes from 10 up to 20. So you get 10 more Human Killer on this thing for those jobs, you know, your knight, your paladin, all those jobs you see on the screen right there, get that buff. So an, a big upgrade, Dawnlight, a very strong sword now. Candy Blade, this thing gets an upgrade. This is Sweetheart Miranda's weapon. Uh, magic version goes from 181 to 199. So not as big of an upgrade right there in terms of raw damage. But if we look at the upgrade to the plus six, the slash attack resist pin goes from 20 to 30. Hey, 10 more slash attack resist pin, you'll take that especially on a magic slashing sword it's one of the best ones out there and then dark worm axe this thing goes the attack version goes from 164 to 197 or the crit version goes from 18 to 25. in this case both of those got a big jump so either one that you were using before gets buffed the lightning attack 30 stays the same um then slash attack 15 stays the same but you get 10 aoe resist that goes away after getting hit two times so okay it's 10 more aoe resist at least to start a fight not terrible and that is the new stuff coming to global this week now i'm going to double down on what i said about these new units and vision cards i don't know if there'll be a lot of pulling for these this feels like a big skip and save week to me but there will be some people out there especially if you're an elsorel player this vision card looks really solid for her if you're a great sword player there's some draw there otherwise let's see what the banners are and hopefully they are extremely extremely generous with the banners this week we'll see you tomorrow morning thank you guys for watching have a good day peace